you are getting the subscription na you are getting creating the resource on the cloud somewhere in the data center somewhere in the uh, what we say uh, that logical unit is going physical unit is going to be created okay and for that you have to pay because you use that resource you create that resource for your own purpose how much time that you are going to be created for that particular time you have to pay free tier means you are not actually getting the resources free you are getting the subscription free if the credit is going to be added into your account but once that credit is getting consumed your 200 dollars is getting consumed now after that from your credit card the billing is going to be cutting down in this way this is we called it as a free tier okay so now your deployment is complete now we have to go to the resource i'll show you okay so see uh public ip is there okay but here you will not getting the private ip if you go and just check it over here in the tab of win vm in the overview tab if you go just little bit down there is a networking part inside the network setting if you go and inside the network setting okay so see private ip is also going to be there and public ip is also going to be there this is going to be a chargeable one because how we connect to this vm by using this public ip for that we are opening the rdp port okay if i'll just come down this is my network security group that is win vm1 nsg okay if you go i am just check this is again going to be a one of the resource okay and right now these are all the two rules incoming traffic and outgoing traffic so we can control this particular traffic what incoming traffic on my virtual machine i'll open the rdp port and i'll open the http port now see rdp port is what rdp port is remote desktop protocol now from your machine my machine from my desktop i can getting connect with the win vm1 by using this rdp it means my actually vm virtual machine is exposed the exposed over the internet okay i'll definitely show you so and i'll share that particular ip with you guys as well so that you can from your browser you can get the vm1 okay now I, how i'll get enter into this win vm1 okay i'll come back to this because of that rdp port okay first of all i had to copy the public ip now inside my machine make sure this remote desktop connection application is going to be there i have to put the public ip over here and try to connect it with it but before that whatever the credentials that you mention at the time of creating the virtual machine make sure those credentials you have to remember okay and then click on okay now see this screen is getting appeared it means we are now getting connected with the vm1 win vm1 windows machine so this is the windows machine it's coming so from my machine i am going inside the virtual machine and if you go and just check it over here in the overview see start button is getting disabled because it is already started okay you can stop it you can restart it from this okay 
Now there are the connect and connect via bastion. I will definitely tell you this particular point. What is bastion? So bastion, Azure bastion again is a one of the service which gives you remotely secure, okay, remote remotely secure access by using RDP. So it is a one of the service. Instead of using simple RDP, use the bastion. It's going to be a very, very important point so that your machine is not getting exposed over the Internet. Your traffic is getting very, very secure. OK, so to secure the traffic, you have to use the Azure Bastion. It's not a part of right now uh, in AZ 900. But yes, this is going to be a, one of the service which is used over there. OK, so I hope. This is. This screen is going to be visible to all of you and this is we called it as a win VM. OK, now inside the win VM, I have to install one server. Okay. It's coming. That is server manager is coming. So I explicitly install one server. OK, and go with this add roles and features. OK, it is in the progress, so we have to wait for few seconds. OK, now it is completely done. We have to add the roles and features. Click on the next. I just want the server installation. That is, I want to use web server. Add the features and click on next. Everything is getting default and just install it. OK, it will take. Minimum one minute and then we'll be back to the VM. OK, and I just want to show you right now if I just copy the public IP. OK, and I'll paste it on the browser part and just enter it. So see right now it is still in the progress because my server is getting installed. Once it is getting installed, then my IIS server. OK, right now server is not getting completely installed over here. OK, so it will take time. And that's why we are not getting anything over here. Once the server is getting installed, my server page is default server page eh? getting reflected over here. OK, so right now there is nothing. Now I'll come back to the VM. Checked it. OK. Add this web server.
Okay, my my machine is getting hanged in between. I'll disconnect it one more time. I'll connect it one more time. Let's check. Otherwise, we'll continue after the lunch break. Yes. Come back over here. Minimize it. Okay, it does not allow me to type anything over here. Hmm. Okay, no issues. I already have the same kind of the machine with me, the same installation that you had to done it over here. Okay, I'll come back to the portal. Okay, so this is the again BN. Windows machine one and copy that public IP address. Okay, instead of that, if I will put it. OK, so see that kind of the thing I want to tell you if I will install that server. OK, I can access this Windows virtual machine with the help of public IP on from my browser. I just want to copy this in the chat box. You can also able to access this. With the help of this IP, you can also able to access this IS server over there. Just tried it. And let me know whether you are getting accessible this the same page. Or not. OK, so. This is the way that we are creating the VM. OK, installing the server and access it. Through the browser. OK, so. We'll stop over here and see make sure whenever we are talking about this win uh, VM, if I will stop that, if I will delete its networking setting. OK. And if I'll stop. If I'll stop this inbound port rule, OK, whatever this HTTP because of this port, OK, rule is getting open port is getting open so that anyone can get an access over here. If you go and just check, OK, so if I go and just. Checked it over here. OK, so any resource any destination okay so anyone can get this kind of the win vm server page accessible okay 
now how because i allow you now i'll create on the deny and just saved it i'll update the security rule okay what i make the changes now instead of this okay i'll deny okay so no one can access this win vm server with the help of public ip now if you also get and try and refresh your page and just checked it whether you are getting it or not <clears throat> yeah i know it's still getting i am also still getting i am also getting worried okay instead of that deny okay let me delete that rule okay now i have to refresh this let me refresh it one more time Copy it. It is giving me it's a not secure, but it's still getting accessible. Okay, to go inside the NSG. That is again okay. Okay, let me solve this issue, but. see whenever we are having this particular win vm with the no port is getting open as our browser is going to be aware about 80 and 80 uh, http and https that's why it is going to be still not, with the help of not secure see it's still getting accessible but as per my point of view it is not getting to allow me to access this page okay okay so i'll find out that bug and definitely get back to you but this way windows machines are getting you uh, created windows virtual machines are getting created in the same way how we create the uh, yes yes it means that security rule is getting applied okay so uh, guys here we will take a break then we'll start with the next
part of the uh, same module. Yes, yes. Just now we'll get the lunch break. Okay, so it's a 45 minutes break. I'll be back. Uh, how much time right now? Let me check. At 2.45, we'll be back. Okay, it's a two now. Okay, so after 45 minutes, we'll continue with the things for the next module, module three, and some of the concepts from the module two as well. Okay. So take a lunch break, guys. I'll be back at 2.45.
Hello, everyone. I hope all of you are back. Yes, Ajay. Any questions? Okay, if mic is not enabled, uh, I think it's disabled. So you can put your question in the chat box. Okay, I hope everyone is getting back on their seat. Okay, okay. 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 <clears throat> we'll wait for two minutes more. Let all the people are there. In between, I'll share my screen. So please confirm is my screen is visible. Thank you, Swapneet. Thanks, Ashwin. Yeah. Thank you, Ritesh. Okay. <clears throat> yes, yes, definitely. I'll share all the links and uh, if I'll share all the links over there, okay, so that you can easily able to for the recording for the session, you can access our YouTube channel. You have to just subscribe it and uh, you can get all these things on the YouTube channel as well. And definitely, Archie will do that kind of the thing for you. Okay. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll, I'll definitely uh, tell your thing to the Archie. Okay. Okay. So now I'll start with the virtual network. Okay. So whenever we are talking about the virtual network, again, it is a one of the main resource. OK, as. OK, I think Archie answer your questions to all of your questions. OK. And I hope everyone is back. Because this is going to be again a very important point that is virtual network. OK, so virtual network at the time of creating virtual machine, we are explicitly create that virtual network. OK, but uh, can we create independently virtual network? Okay. So again, it is possible. OK, and it is a, one of the service. We called it and if you go and just check previously, I have these two virtual networks with me. OK, now I want to create a, a simple virtual network. OK, without all these things. OK, so 
without explicitly creating the virtual machine can i independently create a virtual network and can then i use okay uh, that virtual network for my linux virtual machine okay so we'll create that virtual network first i just named it as vnet linux okay <clears throat> so for creating the virtual network again we have to proceed with the tabs for the basics you have to mention the subscription resource group okay your virtual network name so i just named it as vnet a i'll keep the same resource group okay i'll put my virtual network in the same resource group that is training az900 okay after that <clears throat> region is same okay then for the security i didn't want any right now encryption and bastion as well but see for the uh, secure rdp for the uh, what we say securely remote accessing the thing okay with the help of rdp but make sure it is not going to be exposed over the internet we have to secure it okay so that any hacker is not going to be uh utilize your virtual machine and for that purpose the very important term is there that is azure bastion so it is a paid service you can use that service at the time of creating a virtual network it is possible over there you can create a firewall you can prevent the ddos attacks over there okay so denial of service the so that kind of the network protection obviously we can achieve with the help of the security okay so right now we have to just for az900 we have to just focusing on how to create a virtual network so for the basic we have to just name the virtual network a okay now i'll come to the part of ip addresses and ip addresses ip addresses are of two types ipv4 and ipv6 right now i am in the ipv4 okay i'm just using if you go and uh, understanding of the ipv4 and ipv6 okay so that you will get the more clarity so this part is not going to be a part of right now over here to discuss because it it is itself a different subject but here mostly we are using right now ipv4 okay so uh, here we are using 128 bit type of the address four packets are there okay so it is going to be a four bit uh, <clears throat> sorry eight bit over there and uh, <clears throat> how we define those kind of the addresses along with that there are different types of the classes class a class b class c okay so these are the different types where we are for the home networks we are using which particular class for the private networks which which class we are using okay so right now we are in the azure and basically we are talking about the ipv4 that is class a type and that's why it is uh defined with the range 10.0.0.0 so that is we call it as an address space okay and see if you go and check azure automatically requires for uh first four ip addresses for their own purpose and the last ip address for their own purpose so basically five ip addresses are basically uh, reserved for the azure okay and in between what are the remaining are there we can use it so from this 0 to 255 range okay how many total addresses that we have 65536 okay so this is going to be a, again independent area where you have to explore it more and more when you are uh, uh, searching for the az104 certification or uh, networking certification az700 certification okay so right now just keep it as it is but if you go and just check okay from the 16 to 29 so these are we called it as a cdr type of uh <clears throat> notation okay so azure you cdr notation to define the address space okay so that will get the this kind of the addresses available to us now if i'll just change it to the 22 okay now what do you mean by this 22 okay that is cidr not uh, uh, class interchange domain okay so this is one kind of the sorry class just 
seven. It's a C I D R dot X Y Z. Yes. Okay. So it is we called it as a C I D R. Yeah. It's a class list. Because previously we are talking about that is class A, class B, class C. Right now, if we are focusing on the Azure, it's a classless inter-domain routing. Okay, and that's why we are talking about this slash type of the notif not notation. Okay, so how many counts you, with the help of this site you can get the more detailed knowledge. Okay, so this is we called it as a classless inter-domain routing service. Okay, so this CIDR notation with the help of the CIDR notation. OK, we can put that particular. Address range here you can change it to 192.168.1.0 or 0, 0.0. That kind of is also going to be allowed you. OK, but for. Uh, understanding point of view. OK, I'll just go and keep it. Default as it is. OK, and if you go and just checked it. So the last bits, OK, that is the uh, first four and the last. OK, this uh, first four addresses and the last addresses is going to be stored by the Azure. And that's why here more than that, we can't create the address because see, if you go with the 29, it gives you the eight addresses. OK, and now if you go with the eight addresses, the, at that time, I didn't create the exact address space. OK, so make sure whenever we are having this kind of the address. Range with us. OK, so we have to define the proper address range. It is going to be a very important. OK, and this is we called it as a. Subnet address, OK, and. This is we called it as an address space and inside that address space we had to define the subnets. OK, so subnet is what? Where we are actually. Logically grouping the. Networks, OK, so here you can. Select which kind of the subnet that you want. OK, what is your purpose? And as per that you can. Mention the name, so I just named it as a subnet one. OK, uh, right now I'll go with this IPv4. OK, and if you want to add security group route table. OK, network address translation gateway. So they, that rules are not rules are also going to be over there. OK, so that we can get connect with the other resources as well. OK, so right now it is not going to be a part. Of this AZ 900, we have to just create a one subnet. OK, and after that. We have to put the tags. OK, just review and create. Once the validations are getting passed. OK, it is under the deployment. I'll open the same. We'll open the duplicate tab as well. OK, so now my resource is ready. We go and just check for the virtual network. This is your VNet A. OK, this is your address space. You can define the number of the subnets over there within that particular address space. OK, so right now we are having only one subnet. OK, right now here we are not getting any subnet details. So you go inside over here and subnet is. One of the menu you can get the subnet. Now if you want to create the subnet explicitly, you can create the subnet. 
more subnets over there. No issues with that. OK. Now, in the same way, if you want to create a VPN gateway, OK, that subnet you required. So you have to go with the gateway subnet. OK. Now, I'll come back to the home. So this is my virtual network A. OK, I'll create the virtual machine again. But now I'll creating the Linux. OK, so I'll use this my training resource group. Subscription is all already there. And here I just named it as a Linux VM. OK, keep it in the same region. Availability option and go with the availability zone and I'll put it in the zone one for the security type. I'll go with the standard. Then. For the size, I'll just keep the standard one. OK, then after that. You can select from the sizes as well. OK, uh, for the instead of SSH. I'll use the username. OK, OK, here I have to select the image. Huh? Otherwise, Windows is getting going to be created. So. OK, so instead of SSH public key, I'll go with the password. I just put the username. That is. VM. 101. And put the proper password. OK, I just keep. The simple as it is. OK, I'll allow the SSH as well as uh, HTTP. OK, then for the disk, I'll go with the standard one. That is SSD. OK. For the networking, yeah. So see by default in my training resource group, this network is already available. That's why it is automatically taken up this network. That is VNet A. If it is not there, it is going to be created explicitly. So you can attach the virtual network. OK, either you have to create it. Previously or you can. Attached it explicitly. OK, so. This is your subnet. Public IP is still remain required NSG. OK, for the inbound ports, I'll open the SSH and HTTP. OK, make sure whenever I delete that virtual machine, my public IP and NIC is also going to be deleted. OK. Then for the management, no. For the advanced, having no things. OK. Then put the tags. Then. Click review and create. OK, now create that virtual machine. Next few seconds.
Okay. So now we'll get that Linux VM ready. So this is the public IP, but see, this is your Linux VM. So we can't use the RDP. Correct. RDP is used for what purpose? For the Windows machines. Okay. Now how I can then get connect with the Linux VM. So here is a option connect. Okay, so either you have to use this SSH using Azure CLI or you have to use the SSH. Okay, or more ways to connect. So I think I must say here you can get the bastion remote desktop protocol. So this is going to be a explicitly install that thing onto your local machine. Okay. Now if I go and select that. It's validating. OK, once it is validate. I just tick on that. That you are requesting for the port 22 configure and connect. So this is the one way or either you have to go and switch it over here. Okay, once it is done, we'll be back at this machine and will connect it to that machine. OK. So I hope. This is the way that you have to create the Linux VM with the help of already creating. Virtual network, you can create the virtual network. OK, you can create then VM. No issues with that at the time of creating the VM. You can create the a uh, virtual network again, no issues with that. OK, so this is the one of the way it takes time. So I'll be back at this thing. OK, in between, I'll just continue with the. Next topic. OK. So the remaining topics are Azure virtual desktop. What is Azure Virtual Desktop? So it is a desktop. OK, and uh, we must say it's a virtualization app. OK, that runs your desktop exactly in the cloud. You will get whatever the your desktop that you have, whatever the configuration of your desktop that you have, you can easily exactly get it inside the cloud. That is we called it as an Azure virtual desktop, OK, which is exactly similar. Uh, virtualize your app, basically virtualize your complete environment, OK, without having to run additional gateway servers over there. OK, so this is we called it as what? It's a des desktop. And an app. OK. runs in the cloud. OK. So this is we called it as an Azure virtual desktop. Now I'll come to the Azure. Container services. Any idea about that Azure container services? What are the containers? If you are aware about Docker. OK, so we are having a one particular. 
machine where doctor uh, sorry docker desktop is going to be there okay along with that we can create an image of our application and that application we have to uh, make sure that exact application we have to execute it okay onto the different uh, machine but at that time we are worrying about what kind of the uh, <clears throat> configuration uh, into our friends machine or into the client machine that we have okay now i'll create a one complete rest api application and i want to deploy it onto the client machine i am worrying about the configuration correct so at that time instead of worrying about the configuration docker gives me the a very uh, simple way that you can create your complete image okay of your application along with the whatever the resources that you required whatever the configuration that you required and with the help of those configurations and with the help of this application complete okay complete resource package is going to be ready for me that is we called it as an image okay and that docker is having a docker container registry where i'll put my image okay and from the client side i'll use that registry i'll register for that registry i'll use that image without worrying about any type of the configuration because configuration is automatically there i'll using the java 8 okay i am using the <clears throat> uh, which particular testing uh, units okay uh, what are the testing configurations that we have what are the development configurations we have i definitely i'll keep all this configurations along with me and docker makes me that easy okay so whenever i'll deploy that image okay uh, onto the client side it is easily getting deployed and without worrying about the configuration my configuration is also getting installed because all these images default images are present in the docker hub okay so here also just like a whatever that image we have in the docker container registry that is we called it as a container okay where we are actually putting my complete configuration and application details okay so in the same way in azure we are having this containers which is very light in weight okay uh virtualized environment again uh, there okay it does not require any operating system management okay whatever the demand that we have we can easily get that kind of the thing but for that here azure maintain those kind of the things in azure container registry that is acr okay so whatever the language that you used whatever the operating system that you use nothing worrying about that i just use that container and deployed it onto the client side but now not in the client machine on the cloud with the help of azure container services okay now for that purpose here we are having three main things that is the very first thing is that container registry where i'll put the all containers just like a docker container registry uh, here we are having the azure container registry okay so that purpose we are having first of all the azure container instances so again this is one of the pass service okay and which offers me to run the containers or to run the pods if you are aware about the kubernetes so there are the pods of containers clusterization is going to be there okay it is going to be easy for me to use those kind of the services on the azure with the help of azure container instances okay so that we can run the number of the containers at a time okay with the help of aci that is azure container instances along with that there is a azure container apps okay just like a aci 
along with that if i required the load balancing if i want to distribute the traffic and obviously at that uh, uh, whenever we are having the very heavy traffic on the web applications so make sure my application is really really getting very heavy okay now it can't handle that particular traffic so we have to put that scaling part we have to put that application along with the scale along with the load balancer and for that purpose the another service is that azure container apps so that my web app is going to be scale in scale out as per the requirement okay if traffic is heavy load balancer checks the health of the machine and if that application is really uh, very heavy it can't respond automatically it just scale out okay it means we are scaling up the instances of each and every application with the help of vms okay and then we distribute the traffic it is going to be easily responding your type of the inquiries okay so this is the second one third one is azure kubernetes service so if we want to orchestrate the service okay if we want to put instead of containerization okay i just want to implement the containerization along with orchestration okay and make sure we required the large volumes of the containers at that time we'll go with the azure kubernetes service that is we called it as a aks okay so these are the azure container services now if we go and compare the virtual machine virtual desktop and containers so virtual machine is a cloud based server that supports either uh, windows or linux environment if we'll go with the virtual desktop it provides a cloud based personal computer windows desktop experience okay and for the containers it is a miniature like it's a light in weight it's a miniature environment you can easily uh, grab it and create your application in any any particular environment okay so it is going to be a miniature environment which is going to be a well suited for running the microservices okay so uh, as per for the scalability point of view containers are going to be better as per the dedicated application you just want to get connect and use it virtual desktop is going to be better but when in the organization part is going to be there and you want to lift and shift okay you just want to migrate the things okay so lift and shift migration is going to be a part at that time virtual machines are very useful so these are the basic difference between the vms virtual desktop and containers okay now after that azure app service what do you mean by azure app service so it's a fully managed platform service which is going to be uh, give you to build deploy and scale web apps and apis quickly okay so it is basically used for web app and api so whatever the apis and web apps that you want to build and deploy and if you want to scale it okay so for that purpose azure app service is going to be best whatever the language that you have select that language okay as per the language uh, uh, your compliance requirement is going to be there your security part performance everything is in uh, give, gives you the more control over there okay aks will work with apps or instances okay aks is a service okay and whenever you are talking about 
the apps or instances it is or uh, uh, basically talking about the containers okay multiple containers sit on one operating system you have to package it in a one container whatever the applications that we have whatever the services that we have okay so instead of instances it is not actually working on the instances aks will work on the applications number of the applications and services you have to package it okay in a container okay and you have to uh, uh, sit on the top of it you have to host the operating system that is going to be a aks okay so that multiple containers are actually working on the single operating system whatever kind of the application that you have okay so aks will work on apps now as your app service it's a as i already mentioned it is a fully managed platform to build deploy and scale your web apps okay and uh, obviously it is going to be offering you the more uh, security more performance uh, type of the things over there okay uh, it requires a very limited thing okay and just for the coding at least it is a platform as a service again pass so we are not worrying about the infrastructure we have to just worrying about the development part okay so again this is going to be a very good option if you go and want to create the web application on the azure you have to go with the azure app service i'll show you on the portal as well okay so here i think my ssh using cli is completely done okay but uh, on my azure cli it's a very first message coming to me so i have to explicitly create the storage for this subscription it is necessary okay and in the second tab i'll show you about the azure app see this is the kubernetes service okay so you can use this cluster over there but you have the understanding about what is the cluster what is the pod what is this these are the different different terminologies which is going to be a part of kubernetes then you will get the more understanding of it okay now just for az900 this is one of the service then uh, i am talking about azure apps over here it is not there so i will just mention the app services okay and if you go and create okay so web app with database you can create web app with database or you can explicitly add the database that is again okay no issues with that so i'll create the simple web app over here okay just for the demo purpose i just want to tell you you can either go with the code either go with the container either go with the static web app that choice is yours okay now you have to select the subscription first then you are training then you are instance details if you will go with the web app you have to mention the unique name of your site okay so see every time uniqueness is going to be maintained if it is already taken up so make sure it is going to be a valid one okay if i'll go with the code okay at that time you have to choose the language okay so for the python php node java and dot net now for the dot net java uh, all these things linux and windows options are coming 
operating system but if you go with the python i think only linux option is going to be there windows is not coming it's it's uh, microsoft is still working on that part if i'll go with the dot net but make sure that one way back we have to create over there and then we have to use it with the local git it's a long process but see here you can choose the code and you can choose the operating system okay in this way that you have to create your way back okay now if you for go for the deployment thing okay so if you enabled it so you have to authorize first your github account either you have to go with the local git okay this is not coming into my uh, particular thing but i must say it's going to be a there if i go with this java 8 as i am a java person i will mostly recommend this for the java 8 we have to authorize it first as my github account is not getting activated so we have to authorize it first okay and then we have, from the local git we have to connect that web app so that continuous deployment is going to be happen okay it's a part of devops so my github repository via github actions whatever the applications that we are going to be created make sure we whatever the changes that we have to make over there it is going to be reflected every time so local git option is coming if it is uh, not authorized so uh, sorry if it is authorized then local git option is coming okay then after that either you have to go this way back publicly available or not okay and uh, any kind of the dependency injection or network injections that you required so you have to keep those things in mind then monitoring tags and review and create so in this way your app services are going to be your web app is basically created okay so i'll come back to this what it ask to me are you sure want to continue connecting i'll say yes okay and see i'll connect it over here connection closed by port 22 okay yeah so see i am in the linux vm if you go and just check my name is getting changed and that is at the rate linux vm is coming so it means that i am going inside the linux vm okay if i just make one directory over here let me check sudo okay so से सुडो यू नो इट 
just mention that argument is okay but still i am in the linux vm with the help of sudo commands you can do multiple type of the operations over here okay so this is the way that we can getting connect with the linux vm okay This way we can getting connect with the uh, with the help of Azure CLI, okay, and we can getting connect with the Linux VM as well, okay. So I hope this point is clear to all of you. Any questions? Okay. So now I'll move towards the next topic. That is networking services. Yes, yes, Nidash. There are so many different types of the uh, links are available. I'll definitely discuss those part. Okay. So here in the Azure networking services, it will go with the VNet Azure virtual network. It enables Azure resources to get communicate with each other mm, over the internet or to the on-premise networks. Okay. So let me tell you about this part as well. <clears throat> if I talk about this virtual network, okay, so this is your virtual network. Your subnet is going to be created and inside that subnet, your virtual machine is there. One NIC is going to be attached. You can apply the two different NSGs as well so that one NSG on the subnet level and one NSG on the NIC level. So what is that NSG is all about? NSG is network security group. Okay, it just guards the traffic. Okay, it just filters the traffic so that which traffic is getting allowed on the subnet and which traffic is going to be allowed on the at the NIC level. Okay, so this is all about the virtual network. But if I required. Okay like on premises network is there one machine is there and i want to get connect with the virtual network one to that vm obviously at that time we required the vpn this is we called it as whenever a one machine from the on premises okay getting connected with the vm with the help of vpn this is we called it as a site to site connection Okay, the same employee, but working from home and now want to able to get connect over there. Okay, so he is having his own laptop and from the laptop he want to get connect to the VM. Okay, which is present on the cloud at that time again VPN is required, but the one single person is going to be getting connected by using VPN. This is we called it as a point to site. 
okay so there are number of the virtual machines present on the on premises and getting connected to the vm this is we called it as a site to site but if the person who is not present in the organization but a part of organization and want to get connect with the vm okay so for that by using vpn that person is able to connect with the vm that is that point type of the connection is we called it as a point to site okay so these are the two different uh, types of the connectivity we can done from on premises to the cloud okay but if i will talk with the within the cloud within the cloud communication let me check up huh? just a minute okay so now i am within the cloud now my first vnet a is present in east us and same in the same region vnet b is going to be present okay my first vm1 is going to be a part of vnet a vm2 is a part of vnet b now they want to get communicate with each other how it is possible and for that purpose peering option is coming okay so whenever two machine within the same region getting communicate with each other this is we called it as a regional pairing because within the same region it is going to be communicated now my third virtual machine which is present in west us region in the vnet c another virtual network now i want to get connect from vnet b to vnet c and where is my vnet b in east us and where is my vnet c in west us how this communication is getting possible again with the help of peering that is we called it as a global peering okay so like your sales team and marketing team is a part of one region okay but somewhere your production team is going to be a part of the another region at that time if they want to get communicate with the company a okay so in this manner there is a global pairing but within the region there is a regional pairing okay so this is we called it as a vnet pairing that is a regional and global okay site to site i hope this points are clear to all of you what is site to site and point to site but here vpn is going to be required vpn gateway okay so vpn gateway is used to send the encrypted traffic between the azure virtual network and on premise location okay over the public network make sure a uh, vpn gateway gives you the encrypted traffic over public internet okay now i'll come to that point express route what is express route so again it extends the on premises network into azure over a private connection but it is facilitated by a connectivity provider okay so it just secure the traffic okay instead of public internet we have to use the private ips okay 
let me tell you i think i have one particular image over here let me check express route <clears throat> okay so see this is customer network okay and it gives me this secure connection okay so this is we called it as a customer connection here we have to explicitly use the express route circuit who is giving me this so suppose i am using airtel network okay my provider is airtel okay so we have to explicitly create that particular partnership with the airtel and we have to use that connection to get okay to get the things from the to get the access the resource from the clouds okay so whatever the things that you required either you are office either you are uh demonstration purpose either your azure services okay so microsoft edge is going to be allowed you whenever you are having this third party enabled connection with you okay it is going to be a really very costly and you have to explicitly create that particular point third party point over here if i'll go and show you express route circuits okay if you go and create it it is easily getting created but you have to make sure that provider you have to select okay so which type of the provider that you want to explicitly hire okay that is a third party provider we must say and it's going to be a given you these kind of the skus billing models okay so it's going to be a metered it's going to be unlimited so the choice is yours okay so express route extends on premises networks into azure but make sure over the private connection that is the main difference between vpn gateway and express route So here I'll mention so into Azure over. private connections okay and vpn gateway that is public internet over the public internet so this is the main difference between vpn gateway and express route now i'll come back to this Yes, yes, definitely. And share those all those things. The next topic is Azure DNS. What is DNS? It's a domain name server. This is a one kind of the again service. You can <clears throat> whatever the private IPs and public IPs that you have. OK, so Azure gives you this private DNS zones. This is a one, one kind of the service. You can configure this kind of the service. OK, you can. Register your IPs OK uh, over there. So instead of using IPs, you can use the DNS 
okay that name system is going to be there and uh, uh, it gives you the reliability and performance uh, over a global network so that dns name servers using any cast of the network okay so to just casting out the networks on the port, uh, on the ips we have to use the dns okay so it uh, this dns security is based on azure resource manager it is going to be again a very important thing and it enables the role based access control protocol and monitoring and as well as the logging part as well okay so how it maintains all this kind of the thing so for that they use the record sets or records over there okay and which is points directly to that proper azure resource okay if i uh, for example if i go with the www.google.com this is we call it as a google dns and we can easily get that kind of the page over here because it is going to be registered by the google the same way can we having these virtual machines web applications over there okay so can we get that kind of the thing over here so yes we can use it by using the azure dns okay so this is again one of the important service now a very important point is that azure storage so what are the different azure storage services what are the different storage tiers that we have can we have the redundancy options over there okay can we make the multiple copies of the storages yes okay uh, then after that uh, what type of the storage we have okay uh, in the azure so that we will check okay and uh, can we create the containers can we create this kind of the uh, storages and can we save the images over there can we access those images okay how it is getting accessible okay so we'll check that particular part but here for that purpose first of all we have to understand how we create the storage account okay so make sure storage account creation of storage account is one of the service which is given by the azure but make sure here again globally unique name you have to mostly given over there okay it uh, provides over the internet access worldwide then you can easily determine the different number of the storage services okay so unique name is most important thing okay and what are the different types of the storage services so very first one is the blob azure blob okay so blob is for binary large object you can either save the text image any media file mp3 mp4 okay so as i hope you are aware about there are the three types of the data structured data unstructured data okay and partial structured data now whenever we are talking about structured data for that we are using the sql okay for the unstructured data now here we are skip that part because we are not talking about the structured query language or structured data okay whenever we are talking about the data which is present in the tab tabular manner rows and columns then we called it as a structured data can we put the unstructured data where we have to put now for that purpose here azure storage we can use okay and for the structured data sql database is going to be there okay but whenever we are talking about storage account can we keep the images can we keep the files can we keep the uh, uh, partial structured data that is we call it as a json type of the data 
okay so how we keep that kind of the data now for that unstructured data which is not actually having the structure like your images your uh, mp3 mp4 files okay text everything is there so there are so many things whenever we are talking about binary large object all this type of the data is making make sure which is we called it as a unstructured data or binary data okay so which is going to be stored in the azure in the form of azure blobs okay then after that azure files one more thing that i want to tell you here azure blob is also called it as a container okay yes yes definitely this is going to be called it as a container huh? so don't get messed with the container instances container that kind of the container where we are actually putting the configurations and all which is we called it as actually a image so this is going to be different here azure blob where we are actually putting the textual data image mp3 mp4 whatever type of the binary type data unstructured data that you have to put you have to use with the azure blob okay to go with the azure blob for the azure files okay whenever you are high uh, set up a very highly available network okay and uh, you have to use the files over there uh, log files or different number of the files that you require and you have to keep it inside the azure for that you have to go for the azure files okay then after that <coughs> we must say any network files that you require for example okay now whenever we require to uh, get the communication happen between the application so one application is uh, sending the message to the other application but in a asynchronous way so one application send the message to the other application app one send the message to the uh, app two and whenever that message is required by the app two app two is just getting that message okay from the storage so for that we are using the azure queue okay so here we called it as a message storage this azure queue is going to be used for the message storage okay so whenever that message is required by the different number of the application which is sending by the app 1 it automatically get by using this azure queue okay and the next is azure tables okay so here this is really little bit different from the sql table because there you are having the rows and columns but here you are having the key and attribute option okay your structured non relational data is going to be stored over here basically we are talking about the schema designing okay oh, sorry schema less design because in structured we are having the schema here schema less design okay so whenever we are having this non relational data okay and that time we are using the tables over there okay <clears throat> now whenever we are accessing those services they are accessing with the public endpoint so this question is always coming okay now for the blob storage we are having this https okay your storage account name that definitely i'll show you okay uh, then after that dot blob dot core dot windows sorry my bad so windows dot net okay so this type of the endpoints are there so for the file uh, it's a file dot core dot windows dot net for the queue it's a queue only here 
you will just make the changes q dot core dot windows dot net for the table it's a table dot core dot windows dot net so these are the public endpoints and you can easily access those particular storage accounts publicly okay over the internet so i'll definitely show you it in the practical but before that i just want to remind you how i'll keep it a uh, highly available so redundancy configuration here a very important part so that is we called it as a storage redundancy so there are the five options redundancy options that is lrs zrs grs g z r s okay r a g r s okay so this is we called it as lrs stands for locally redundant storage z r s stands for zone redundant storage geo redundant storage geo zone redundant storage read access okay that geo zone redundant storage okay i'll show you on the presentation that point is going to be there one image is going to be there <clears throat> so that you will get the more understanding of this redundancy how it is going to be highly available we check i'm talking about this point i hope my screen is visible yeah so i'm talking about this lrs zrs grs and rgrs okay so here one more thing is there that is gzrs okay but just try to understand the thing what i want to say to you okay that is lrs lrs means what three copies of your storage is maintained within the same data center multiple replicas across a data center data center it means within a one particular center within a one particular physical location okay so this is we called it as a lrs locally redundant storage you create a one storage account three copies automatically getting created within the same data center if one is getting off other two are getting ready okay so this is gives you the sla okay that is service level agreement that is we called it as 11 lines okay 12 lines everything everything that that already mentions its durability basically mentioned okay that is 11 lines 12 lines okay then 16 lines and this is the same 16 lines okay so what is that lines are going to be that is going to be in a percentage form so durable how it is going to be a uh, giving your database giving your storage account highly available to you okay so that durability is already mentioned if you'll go with the option lrs three copies three replicas are automatically mentioned created inside a one data center but if i'll go with the zrs replicas are getting created but within the three different zones okay then if i'll go with the grs that is geo redundant storage again make sure huh? one one data center is in the primary region secondary region okay that is having again a one data center but in the secondary region like one first primary region is your central india okay the same 300 miles away there is a pair okay that is we called it as a secondary region and where my another three copies are going to be maintained that is we called it as a 
geo redundant storage now suppose my suppose what happened my primary region is getting failed uh, some disaster is going to be happened can i recover the data so at that time from the secondary region i'll get that data but in a asynchronous way okay it means reading is going to be a possible writing is not and for reading accessibility we are having this ragrs that is grs plus read access so that from the secondary we are reading the data we here we are not getting the reading the data but data is going to be there okay and it is rarely happen so this is we called it as a storage redundancy so i hope this point is clear to all of you <coughs> is it real time sync storage copy yes store az copy is going to be there for that this is a uh, az copy service is going to be used and then your replicas not a storage copy its a replicas are going to be maintained and they are really in a sync <clears throat> okay now the last thing that i want to tell you about this redundancy yeah about the access tiers okay <clears throat> i'll just give you the one simple example all of you are having aware about the netflix okay so the movie which is having recently in the theater okay and if it comes on the netflix what happen everyone is going to be getting and watching that movie from the netflix okay so i'll keep that movie in the hot tier what do you mean by that it means optimized for storing data but it is accessed frequently it means my storage for storage it is optimal but for frequently accessing the data for reading that particular or watching that particular movie frequently i'll keep that movie in a hot tier so if i required a data which is i frequently used okay frequently access i'll put that data in the hot tier now after few months that movie is getting mostly watched okay i'll put that movie in the cool tier why because it is infrequently accessed okay and suppose i delete that movie no issues it still at least for 30 days it is getting stored okay <clears throat> so again optimized for the storing data but in infrequently accessed is going to be there then i'll go with the cool tier now i'll move my movie to the cold because it is rarely accessible okay and rarely it means it's free infrequently accessed but it's skip i want to store it for the 90 days for that time i'll just keep it inside the 90 days okay and after one year uh, after one year obviously at that time this particular movie is not getting watched by many people and uh, obviously at that time we have to put those movies in the archive tier okay again it is optimized for storing data which is rarely accessed but here i'll keep the data at least 180 days okay with flexible latency required now storing wise okay but for the reading wise okay so i'll just pay the less cost for the storage in the hot but for the reading i have to pay more vice versa if i'll just go with the archive 
I will pay for the more for the storage instead of reading because I am rarely accessed it. So for reading operation, I pay less, but for storage I have to pay more. How I will suppose I will pay for storing the data in the hot tire. It's a twenty dollar. Okay, for the storage. Okay, for the archive. It's more than that, but for the reading, if I go for the reading, if I go for the reading from the hot tire because it's a frequently accessible, I have to pay more, okay, and I have to pay less. So this is the kind of the thing, storing and reading the data. So these are the different access tires. You can go and just check those kind of the things over here. <coughs> For the Azure pricing calculator, there is a one thing, Azure pricing calculator, and you can get <clears throat> and share that pricing calculator link on the chat box. You can also check at your end. Okay, if you go like storage account, okay, I'll go with this storage account. Add to estimate. View it, okay. So I'll go with the blog blob storage, okay, and I'll choose the hot tire. So see, there are the three tire, uh, four tires: hot, cool, cold, archive. Okay. So hot tire is there. Capacity is one TB. That is thousand GB. Okay, and here I'll go for the pay as you go model. Now see for the Reading operations. I have to pay this much, but for the storing, I have to pay this much. If you go and just check it, okay. Now, if I go with the archive, I'll for the storage I'll pay very very cheaper price, but for the reading. If you go and just check reading, see it's a sixty-five dollar. So reading operations are very expensive from the archive tire. Okay, but very cheaper from the hot tire. But for the storage, for the storage, your hot tire is very expensive, and your archive tire is very very cheaper. In this way, you can check for the cool tire. If you go for the hot, it's a twenty. For cool, it's a fifteen. For cold, it's a three. I must say yes. And for the archive storage, it's a below one dollar, not more than one dollar. Okay. So this is the pricing calculator. You can whatever the service that you want to create. Okay, for the app service for the virtual machine, if you go and just check for the virtual machine, <clears throat> okay. So see, region wise, you can get the charges for the Windows wise on the Linux wise. That is your operating system wise, you can get the charges for the tier. That basic and standard basic is also some after some days from the August onwards it's getting vanished. Okay, so I'll go with the general purpose. So see, there are the different categories: storage optimized, memory optimized, gaming purpose, then uh, compute optimized, highly performance. Okay, now for the <coughs> one virtual machine. For the two, three, how many different virtual machines that you required? For the ten virtual machines for seven thirty hours, what it be? Okay, you can check. Okay, the service plans are there. Instances are there. Reserved instances are there, so that you can use the those instances over the over there. Okay, you can reserve it, and once the that space is getting occupied by the Azure, your 
virtual machine is getting vanished that is part going to be a there okay but right now for az900 how to calculate the cost can we predict it okay so you can predict it with the help of virtual network with the help of uh, sorry with the help of azure pricing calculator you can predict the price of the different types of the services that you are going to use on the azure okay so this is the <coughs> pricing calculator you have to just check it here they'll already mentioned the one scenario okay if you go for the this kind of the machine learning what are the saved uh, estimates you can check whatever the questions that you have what are the different products that you want to use okay and you can finding out the different number of the estimates you can calculate it okay so this is one of the service again <coughs> So now I hope this uh, part is clear to you how the storage access tires, how the storage redundancy is going to be there. Now I'll come to the practical how we'll create the storage account. Okay, so we'll go and create the resource that is storage account. Create it. So make sure unique name is going to be there. So I'll just give the storage. SEC. <clears throat> I'll keep it in the East US and I'll just keep it in the training resource group. OK, and for the performance, I'll go with the standard. Okay, so for the redundancy, see here we have to use the GRS. So make sure make read access to data available. It means RA GRS. If you go with this, untick this, that is only GRS. You can change it after creating the storage account. You can change the redundancy. No issues with that. Right now, I'll go with the LRS and I'll show you how I convert that storage account redundancy to the GRS. Okay. Then next in the advanced section, everything is remaining same. Don't make any kind of the changes. Make sure this storage account is publicly accessible, enabled from all the networks. OK, then. Protection, there is a soft delete term which enables to recover the blobs uh, within how many days. So by default, it's a seven. You can change it to whatever the uh, days that you want to mention. OK, so by default, seven is going to be taken for the containers for the uh, blobs as well. OK, then next, if you want to give the keys explicitly, you have to use the customer managed key. OK, and if you go and given that encryption part by the provider that is by the Microsoft. So you'll go with the Microsoft managed key. So whatever the SSA. <coughs> sorry, uh, SaaS token is going to be generated. It is going to be generated by the Microsoft itself. No worries about that. OK, then. We'll put the tags. Review and create. OK, now here I just want to let you know about the ARM and ARM template. That is Azure Resource Manager and Azure Resource Manager template, ARM and ARM template. So ARM template is always written in a JSON form. <coughs> What is Azure Resource Manager? So Azure Resource Manager is what? What type of the tools that you are going to be used? 
either you use the cli either you use the portal either you use the uh, powershell whatever the tool that you have use it okay but whenever you are using those tools <coughs> yes so there are the number of the tools that we have with the help of these tools we can create the resources it is going to be verified by the arm that is azure resource manager if that resource is going to be done by this azure portal azure cli powershell so these are the different tools with the help of these tools we can create the resources like vm vnet storage account whatever the resources that we have okay so everything is getting what all these resources are going to be verified by this arm that is azure resource manager okay once this is getting verified then only you are going to create this type of the resources over here okay so you are basically writing using guis for creating those resources but first arm is going to be authenticate you authorize you for this resource then only you can create those resources so here how it is going to be authorized how it is going to be authenticate you with the help of template okay so i'll show you that template which is in the json format so over here if you go and just check at the time of creating the storage there is a one automation template over here and if you go and check this is we called it as a arm template okay this is we called it as a arm template can we create our own template yes we can create our own template with the help of notepad with the help of if you are expert in json type of the data if you are aware about all the terms okay uh, which are going to be mentioned in the arm template okay so then you can easily get and deploy it no issues with that okay and this is we called it as an arn template either you have to go with the vs code there are the smart options coming and with the help of this arn template smart options extensions you can create storage account multiple resources templates and then you can deploy those templates on the portal and create the resources okay now for the storage account we have done with the things and now let's create that storage account once it is getting created we have to create the blobs that is containers one more thing that i want to tell you about what is the main difference between azure blob and files so files are getting uh, created within the files that is hierarchy is going to be maintained flat structure is not there but whenever we are talking about azure blobs okay we can't create one blob within another blob files are going to be created one file within another file that is allowed but here that directories are going to be created here we are, we can't create those directories within directories okay in the blob so this is the main difference between blob and files now i'll just come uh, back to the storage account okay and if you go and check in the overview window okay so this is the one of the tab and if you go 
over here that is data storage so see containers files queues and tables okay i'll show you the demo for the container and here i'll create the two containers okay one more thing that i want to show you about the redundancy before creating the container redundancy so see in the east us primary my data center over here my storage account is getting created now whenever i am talking about zrs okay another zone or whenever we are talking about grs secondary region is going to be there so i'll just change it to the grs okay and just saved it huh? see only one right now only one location that is primary once i saved it redundancy change it to geo redundancy redundant storage secondary region is automatically coming see so now my two regions are there my storage account is kept in this two data centers within two different regions but make sure i already mentioned east us is having a region pair that is west us that is a 300 miles away okay if you will go with the grs then you will get the more understanding of this now again i'll just go with the uh, once you go inside the geo redundant storage you can't use the zone okay and just keep the lrs as it is i hope this point is clear to all of you now i'll come back to the containers once it is getting saved okay i'll come back to the containers now i'll create the two containers if i create a first container and by default anonymous access level is private can i change that access level yes so first of all i create a private blob which is not accessible by anyone okay its access level is private i want to create a public so i think yeah it's in the configuration allow blob anonymous access we have to change it to enabled saved it okay it successfully updated now i'll come back to the containers private having private blob is having private access i'll create a one more container and just named it as a public blob okay let me check configuration sorry allow blob anonymous I have to change it to enable then now i'll create a yeah, now i am able to anonymous read access for the blobs okay so i'll make a one more folder that is public blob okay now in the public blob if i open that blob okay i'll upload a one image from my machine and go with this az900 okay upload it so this image is going to be there if you go and open that image you will get the url if you copied it as it is a public blob okay 
and I'll put it on the browser and just entered it. Okay, the same. I'll share it on the. Yes, Nilesh, it is free and it is draw.io. You can easily use it. OK, so guys, please check that uh, image is getting accessible to all of you or not. OK, why? Because it is a public access over there. OK, anonymous access is going to be there. Now, this is the way that you can access the blobs. Now, if I will come back to the private blob and I'll uh, upload the same image. OK, I'll open that image again, getting one URL, but it's a private. It's a private blob. OK, I'll copy it. And now if I go and check it, it is not allow me to access. If you want to check and check it. At your end also. But you are getting an error that resource not found. So what is the another way that how can I access that image? So there is another more part over there. It's really, really. Okay. Now, if I come back in the private blog, there is a one concept that is generate SaaS token. Okay. That is shared access signature. So, this is a hello. So this is a one signature. OK, this is a one token with the help of this token. You can get an access to the uh, private image over there, a private blob over there. So here we have to make sure generate the there is a one button. OK, so generate SaaS token and URL. You will get that SaaS token copied that SaaS token. OK, on before that. Just put the question mark. I'll put the SAS token. Now, if I click on this, I'll get that image. OK, so previously it is not allow me, but with the help of this resource. I'm sorry, with the help of this token, I'll get that image. So what is that SAS token? It is going to be a storage security. So you basically use and giving you the storage security purpose. So here you can use the uh, storage explorer. There are the different types of the. Apps you can use those apps, OK, and you can connect your Azure storage with within your systems uh, app. So you have to connect, get connect with the. Storage accounts, OK, with the help of Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. So this is again one of the app you have to install it, but with the help of this you can easily get and connect with the. Azure storage account, OK, so this is one of the app. OK. So this is all about the storage. Containers. And if you go and check the. Access tiers. Let me tell you about that access tiers. 
it is in the life cycle management okay so see here you will also get the shared access signature there are number of the access keys you can manage the life cycle you can apply the locks okay so these are the different services within the services you can use it to get the more security over the storage accounts okay so this is the storage explorer you can get and connect with the different types of the storage accounts that you have to create inside your azure okay so you have to sign in with azure or you have to attach a resource directly that choice is yours okay so if you go and just check we i suppose i am having i previously i am having this type of the resources uh sorry this type of the accounts over there i can get connect with those if those accounts are already there okay so this is one of the app you can get connect over there instead of doing the operations over here okay so this is all about the storage account i'll come back to the last part of this okay that is azure identity access and security okay so for that we have to first of understand first of you all of you understand microsoft enter id okay so microsoft enter id what is this so it is a cloud based identity and access management service okay i'll show you on the portal if i'll checked it over here this is my microsoft enter id okay and whenever we are having the account okay and if that account is identified and getting authenticated okay by the microsoft enter id then only we are getting the tenant ready okay attached with that enter id okay so if you go and just check this is the name this is not my uh, what we call it as a directory name previously enter id is what this is your azure active directory someone asked me what is that az900 training so this is my azure active directory okay which is going to be attached with the tenant what is that tenant it's a dedicated instance of that uh, active directory or microsoft enter id okay previously it is called azure ad that is azure active directory recently now it is replaced with the azure and microsoft enter id sorry microsoft enter id so whenever we are having this microsoft enter id which is a identity and access management service so employees sign in to access the resources so they have to authenticate themselves first okay and whenever this type of the authentication is going to be done the second option is authorization okay 
So let me show you. No Nilesh, there is no need to change the tire while generating this SAS token. Choice is yours. There are some conditions where you have to put it in, but just now for the sake of understanding for the AZ 900, you have to just understand these are the tires. OK, and uh, I'll definitely show you. I think uh, here if I'm not wrong, by default is going to be a hot tire. So default access tire is hot. OK. So here. You can change it to cool, but at the time of creating the storage account by default is going to be a hot. OK. So now enter ID. This is not Sir, this is a D connect basically. OK, so whatever the user, it's a device management is also there. Microsoft Azure Active Directory right now. It's a enter ID. OK, so how you authenticate yourself first? So basically user, whatever the device that he used, he have to make sure having a, an account. Yeah, he, uh, he or she is uh, user is signing in. OK, then that Azure Active Directory, okay, going to the authentication process. Check his authentication, whatever the details that he entered, whatever the credentials that he entered, okay. So make sure it is going to be a registered, okay. And if he is authenticated one and he is having a subscription with him, okay, then one tenant is going to be attached over there. And with the help of this. OK. That particular tenant ID is going to be there. So now I'll come to that. Part. OK, so this is your tenant ID. This is your directory name. OK, now. Whenever we are having this. Entra directory is ready. Tenant is getting attached whenever tenant is there. It means I have that subscription getting attached over here. So make sure with that tenant ID can we check this if I will go and just check the subscriptions.
okay so see this is my directory name along with the domain okay so i have to make sure that subscription is getting attached to that directory once that subscription is getting attached it means my tenant is going to be a part of this particular subscription and i can create the number of the resource groups i can create the if i am a owner of this subscription okay so basically this is again the main thing over here in the microsoft tender id you can define the number of the users you can add the external identities you can assign the roles okay you can assign the roles you can manage the devices okay you can register the apps okay then uh, you can define the groups over here okay so this is we called it as see we are using the service from this okay so microsoft enter id okay, gives you the single sign on single sign on means what with the help of single id you can access the number of the applications on the cloud number of the resources on the cloud but who is verifying you who is verifying you okay so here that entra id is verifying you first that you are a authenticated one like you are having a authentication means what you are having a aadhar card with you so microsoft identify you that you are a user of microsoft correct it means i am priyanka i am priyanka as a identified by the microsoft enter id i want to drive the car but on the basis of aadhar card can i drive the car how the verification is going to be a possible i am just verified my identity is verified but what kind of the duty that i want to get performed it's not getting verified it is not getting authorized i am not authorized driver i am not authorized car driver okay so how i can drive the car how i can drive the bike because on the basis of aadhar card can i drive the bike can i drive the car no so in this way the two process enter id can do okay so this is we called it as a authentication and authorization so now if i give my driving license i am a authorized person to drive the car to drive the bike so my identity is getting authenticated now i am a authorized for that kind of the resource correct so this is the way that microsoft enter id doing his job okay and in this way the identities are going to be maintained within that directory okay now how to assign the roles how to add the users there are number of the users over here okay so all of you are having your own ids mail ids okay now if i'll go and getting one of your id over here mail id i can add you inside my tenant okay and make you as a member make you as a guest user over there and i'll allow you to use my tenant for the accessing the resource but limitations i'll put what kind of the role that i have to assign you correct so if i give the ritesh as a reader role so he is a reader reader for what on the virtual machine so those roles i have to define okay so how i can add that ritesh how can i add suhas pascal nitesh okay 
so i required their ids over there once i get those ids i can add those number of the users inside my tenant correct but here there are the two different roles okay what are these two roles that is azure ad roles which is we called it as a directory directory level roles okay and are back that is resource level roles okay in the id you can add the user in a bulk single user also going to be added in a bulk you can add the uh, users okay you can make the you can make the group of users that is again okay but whenever we are assigning the roles at the directory levels and at the r back levels so these are the two different types of the roles okay so first of all we'll see how we add the user okay so i have that user i'll delete that user over here okay and can i create the new user yes you can create okay so either you have to create the new user or you can invite the external user okay so first of all i'll create the new user i just named it as a training user 1 okay i'll copy that password which is auto generated okay i'll just named it as a t user 1 i'll paste that password over here okay next i'll go to the properties okay instead of mentioning this all the details so see like if you are a creating the tenant if you are creating the azure directory and uh, that is going to be a part of under the management group for the hr department for the production for the uh, development team okay so there are so many number of the users and can you make sure that these are the uh, whatever the app applications that you are going to be created whatever the virtual machines that you are going to be created how they uh how these other users are going to access the resources which is going to be created by you or how you can access the resources which is going to be created by them okay so to get that kind of the communication happen so entra id allows you to create this kind of the user so that you can make him as a member or make him as a guest like uh if i am a uh i am giving the lecture okay to the another university so i'll giving the training to the accenture at that time accenture is not giving me allow me to become a part of their tenant so i am acting as a guest into that into their tenant correct so they allow me with the user type guest then i'll deliver the lecture i'll create the number of the resources i'll check those resources which is created by the uh, accenture employees i'll train them and in this way the communication is going to be easy for us understood so this is the way that we are creating the user first is the member second is the guest Uh, you, the choice is your you can make the user as a member of your tenant or what the guest as into your tenant it means into your directory okay so 
so i am not feeling all these things you can feel if you if you are a part of that particular organization and you have to mention that creating the internal users for your organization then it's okay now i'll just go to the assignments if you want to add the role at the time of creating the user so here this is we called it as a adding role okay and see i already mentioned there are the directory role so at the time of creating a new user this is we called it as a directory role it means you can actually if the member if the user is a member of the tenant or azure directory over there then he is okay he is going to assign the directory level role so he can need to make the changes make the custom roles he, uh, he is become we have to make sure that he is a reader and writer of my directory so whatever the resources that i am able to create in my directory he is able to read it so this type of the roles i can assign at the directory level okay so if i select it so that is directory readers role is directory readers next review and create and just create that user okay and if you refreshed it you can get that user listing out over here that is t user 1 and it is a type of member can i add the bulk yes if you go and share your ids i can add you inside my tenant okay so that is we called it as a bulk create i have to use this csv file over here i'll open it i'll put okay i'll put over here your username okay everything is going to be there okay and then i'll add you inside my tenant okay once i'll make the changes i'll saved it okay i'll upload the same file edit the csv upload the same file okay and once it is getting saved i have to submit it and whatever the number of the users that i saved inside the this csv file all the users are become a part of my tenant okay can i invite external user okay if any one of you whatever the number of the uh, users that you want to add no limits on that if any one share their email id yes so i'll copy it you will get the invite okay on this gmail i hope it is activated okay so see my user type is automatically change it as a guest assignment okay so see these are the different roles that i have to allow him okay so right now i'll just review and invite him so kindly check 
that invitation you are getting it on that gmail or not so successfully invited user from my site it is successfully invited user aswin okay so wait a minute i'll come back to the invite external user it's a uh, may i know your name k r s n v 100 mention your name sir ritesh okay shrinivas so ritesh is also getting invited if i refreshed it so i hope ashwin is now become a part of my tenant okay so i'll create again invite shrinivas okay so now if i refresh ritesh is also going to be a part of my tenant now and if i refreshed it one more time shrinivas is also there both are these three are the guest into my tenant okay so now i'll come back to the enter id so i can assign the roles okay to the users at the directory level can i assign the roles okay i uh, reset the password i can do the bulk operations okay as it is not supported my system because csv is uh, having i'm really having a one issue with that so i can't do that bulk operation but yes it is going to be a really easy part if your machine is really supported to that particular csv files okay now i'll come back to the again microsoft enter id instead of assigning these roles over here in uh, by going inside the users and all can i assign the roles at the resource level directory levels that all of you are understanding it for the users now i'll make ashwin okay i want to assign the role to the ashwin okay so see these are the administrative roles okay no directory roles are assigned to ashwin now what type of the administrative roles i want to assign him add role now if you able to understand these things the in this way you can assign the directory roles okay and if i want to let me check whether i'll have the virtual machine reader or not reader role just make me sure let me show you the reader <clears throat> no. so this is not going to be done 
with the look okay, directory level roles i am not going to assign i am just want to give you the virtual machine role so that he is able to view the virtual machine let me come back to the virtual machine that is we called it as an r back okay so this is our linux vm okay yeah now this is we called it as access control role based access control okay now here what are the different roles that we have all the roles are defined there are so many different roles over here owner contributor reader see i am a owner so i'll assign the this kind of the roles to the users which are now i am going to add it inside my tenant so owner contributor reader okay so, so many different number of roles are there the most important is owner it means you can assign the role to the other users contributor you can create resources you can uh, access those resources but you can't give the permission to the other users that is a contributor reader who is able to only view all the resources but can't do any kind of the changes over here okay so now i want to add a role assignment okay i'll give you this role reader role okay to the member so i had to select it so at a time i'll make shrinivas ritesh uh along with that ashwin i'll make both of uh, three of them okay uh make them as a reader for the linux virtual machine they can't able to connect to the virtual machine but yes on their azure portal on their portal azure.com they can view their this linux machine onto their screen okay so i go and click on the next review and assign so kindly share yes once you accept the invite kindly go inside the portal.azure.com ashwin shrinivas and ritesh kindly go inside the portal.azure.com now if you go and just check the access control okay if you go and just check the role assignments okay so see i am the owner of the virtual machine i am a an administrator and these three are the readers yes ashwin so can you just refresh and come back to the home and go inside the virtual machine if you go inside the virtual machine do you get linux vm on to your screen kindly share the screenshot so that yes so kindly share the screenshot so that other people are also getting understanding what is the reader role this is we called it as a role based access that is at the resource level we can assign the role okay so see he'll get that linux vm but he can't open that he can't do any kind of the changes over there okay so this is we called it as a identity management that is uh, r back as uh, adding users giving the uh, directory level roles giving the resource level roles okay to 
this particular user okay whatever the user that can be invite the other user so yes okay so this is all we called it as an identity access and for the security your authentication and authorization is going to be a very very important process okay so it gives you and provides you the additional security over there okay so i'll share one kind of the thing with all of you i just want to show you this diagram that is conditional access okay so whenever we are talking about this enter id and uh, what is this conditional access it is going to be used to bring the signals together okay so that it enforce what kind of the policies that you are using if you are using uh, signing from the particular location signing from the particular device signing from the uh, one particular virtual machine okay signing from the uh, signing for the one particular application but here if i'll put if i'll put the policy okay policy for what policy for the proper device if you are uh, accessing the application okay or accessing the data from your mobile and i'll put the policy over here this is we called it as an azure policies okay i'll put the policy i'll restrict you you can't log into that uh, you can't log into that particular app okay if you are logging it from the mobile if you are logging it from the a uh, unverified location okay so this is the way that we are to enforce the policies okay so that we can authenticate each and every user okay with the conditional access that is we can call it as a putting the policies organizational policies and force you to give you the authority either you require the multi factor authentication that is mfa either you have to block that access or you can directly access that app so this is the condition basically as per the condition you actually getting an access attempt over here okay <clears throat> so this is we called it as a conditional access okay so this point is remaining for the role based access i have already mentioned enter id whatever the users whatever the user service plan whatever the user groups as per the subscription what resource groups that you are going to be created and you can easily get and grant the uh, access to the guest user to the team to the team members okay to perform their jobs i hope this point is clear or not yes shrivan uh, shrinivas what happened email id given should be registered with microsoft id yes this is we called it as a verification if your email id is not verified by the microsoft then you can't access those things so this authentication is going to be happened because of the microsoft enter id okay okay so this is uh, about the a very short introduction for the module 2 okay now i'll come back to the module 3 so it's a 515 it's a 510 
So shall I continue with the things or all of you are want any break? Because at six. We are getting over over there. So kindly. Clear that part guys. Okay. Okay, I'll give you the five minutes. Okay, then we'll start with the last module. Last module is very easy. Okay, I'll be start at the 5.15, okay? So take a break for five minutes, then we'll continue with the next thing. Uh, yes, Ashwin, it's I know it's very confusing. Microsoft Edge is basically a, in the context of uh, Express Router. So Microsoft Edge is basically describes the router part. OK, so Microsoft site is basically used. This is just an entry point. Yeah, yeah, correct. Correct, correct. So it's an entry point, entry point.
हेलो एवरीवन आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू या या थैंक यू ओके सो आई विल कम बैक टू द थर्ड मॉड्यूल so here we'll do the three task virtual machine okay creating windows virtual machine linux virtual machine storage account creating the virtual network okay so this is all about the things and along with that creating the users adding the guest users allow him to uh, give, giving them the role on the resource level so that they can view the resource whatever the resource that i am going to create over here created over here okay so now in the last part in the last module okay what is that last module is all about it is all about the uh, management okay and governance so uh guys whenever we are talking about virtual machines management okay so the very first thing come into in our mind is that what is the cost that we have to pay whenever we are creating this virtual machine and for that we have to use the pricing calculator okay i have already made sorry i have already mentioned this pricing calculator previously over here Okay, if you go and search, so by default, uh, this is this first is going to be coming. But AWS is also having their own pricing calculator. GCP is also having their own pricing calculator. Okay, we'll stick with that. Microsoft Azure, and if you go and check for the different number of the resources, you can get the pricing calculator. okay for the compute okay for the networking for the storage every every service okay so with the help of this pricing calculator you can define the resource type what is the your consumption okay so you have to go with the pay as you go model what type of the maintenance that you require okay uh, so that after uh after 7 hours if my working is for 5 hours after that 2 hours my virtual machine is going to be there but after that 2 hours it means after total 7 hours my machine is getting automatically shutting down so maintenance is in our hand so we can make sure this kind of the maintenance along with that we had to mention the geographical area we had to mention the network traffic okay uh so as per the billing zones we had to decide okay then the most and the last important point is that you are subscription okay so if i'll go with this compute virtual machine okay so this is a geographical area what type of the operating system that you want you just want only os or server okay or bistock then standard okay what type of the tier that you want what type of the categories you can go with the general purpose okay if you required the d type of the service okay it's a 8 gb ram 50 gb uh, temporary storage everything is going to be mentioned then you are use the azure benefit as well hybrid benefit sorry azure hybrid benefit as well so instead of license it is not included you can go with the azure hybrid benefit so you have to as per the month your price is really really very low okay so you can use that kind of the benefit okay then 
for the three years if you make sure if you want to reserve the insurance for the three years how much discount that you are getting okay and uh, if you go for the upfront cost if you go for the monthly cost everything over here it is mentioned what type of the disk that you have to manage see yeah, either you have to go with the ssd or hsd if you'll go with the ssd redundancy played a very important role if you'll go with the hdd then redundancy part is not there okay size so as per the size prices are increased okay so if i'll go with the 64 gb so three dollar per month okay then so if you want any storage transactions suppose i want one storage transaction so in this way you have to pay okay then what type of the data transfer okay either you go with the egress or region wise then what is your source region and what is your destination region outbound data how much gb is going to be allowed you okay then by default i'll just keep everything as it is and you now if you go and just checked it okay so it's going to be that much monthly cost you had to pay okay and if you go for the rupees so this much amount you have to pay monthly for a this particular type of the virtual machine so if i'll go with the license include now my price is in increased okay so this is the way that you can easily explore the things with the help of this calculator okay pricing calculator so this is one of the important point after that if i'll go with the another part if i'll go with the that is the marketplace searching for the marketplace let me okay so this is the azure uh, marketplace you have to explore it again okay so this marketplace allows the customer to find to try to purchase okay to add your type of the uh, images over here okay your type of the services over here no issues with that but from this marketplace okay this is a open source platform and here you can add your uh what type of the resource that you want to actually uh, create okay so there are the number of uh, i must say more than 100 more than 100 services are available okay you can select the service provider if you go and select for the third party solutions if you go for the private okay so this is not there but you can create those particular logs over there so this is the marketplace where customer can easily find out the how they can uh, get the provision of the applications and the services instead of uh, leading uh, sorry getting it the hundreds of service providers okay so all these are certified to run on azure from the marketplace and you can get it from this marketplace okay so we have already done with the pricing calculator for the storage i have already shown you and the very important part that the tco total cost 
let me show you PCO calculate. It's not a calculator, it's a total cost of ownership. Okay, it's a calculator when we are talking about the on premises and whenever we want to transfer. Okay, uh, everything from on premises to the cloud. So the comparison is going to be getting it over here. So we have to enter the details for the on premises server infrastructure and we'll get the estimated details and we'll get the report. OK, so this is a one tool where you are estimate cost savings. You can realize how you uh, uh, easily migrate to the Azure. OK, as whenever we are having this much of the workload on the on premises, can we uh, can we recommend the services in Azure? Can can this is going to be really helpful for me? How it is going to be helpful when I move to the my services from the on premises to the cloud. So with the help of this. Uh, total cost of ownership, you can easily get an idea what kind of the workloads that you have, how many different types of the servers, physical servers, operating system, data centers, how many servers that you have. OK, how much RAM that you are going to be used, how much. Uh, uh, optimized uh, processors, how many of uh, processors is going to be optimized uh, for that particular workload? OK, so only for workload one, you can add their number of the workload as per the database, as per the storage, as per the networking. OK, and if you just click on the next. Well, I'll just add the details over here. Add the database. I'll just go with the default. I'll just want to let you know. OK, so first you have to define your workload, adjust the assumptions and view the report. OK, now once this is going to be a. There if I go with the GRS. Okay, if I'll go with the hybrid benefit as well. OK, so see IT labor cost. OK, everything electricity cost, software cost, hardware cost, everything is going to be there. So data center cost, I'll just keep it as a minimal. OK, and if you go and just check it. So this much of the. Over five years with Microsoft Azure, you estimated cost. Saving should be this much. OK. So see. If it, the complete complete report is going to be. Ready and here you will get the more understanding. OK, for the on premises. OK, and on the uh, on the Azure, if you'll go with the Azure 80% we have to pay for the compute data center, networking, storage and IT labors. And if you'll go with the Azure, it's going to be a completely. Mostly for the. Networking, but for the data center, it's zero for the computing. It's really more half. OK, so. This is going to be a better whenever you are. Comparing those things. OK, so. As per the categories for the compute for the data center networking. OK, so this much cost is going to be required for the on premises and for the Azure. You required this much cost for the same infrastructure. OK, so that is for estimated cost for the five years. So this is really, really help you. You can download that report. You can share it. You can save it. OK, so. This is the way that your total cost of ownership calculator helps you. Okay, Whenever if uh, the organization is really want to migrate from the on premises to the Azure. OK, so this is the. Cost management, we must say. OK, and. Uh, 
with the help of pricing with the help of this tco calculator pricing calculator we can easily get the cost management cuttings over there okay and we can easily get the understanding why this cloud is really really very very important right now okay to use the number of the services over there okay so i hope this is going to be a really helpful to all of you the last part is going to be still remaining that is about the governance and compliance so here azure policy is going to be there and i have already mentioned there are the uh, different types of the uh, what we say tools management tools already there okay so that part i am not discussing but yes azure resource uh, sorry azure policy resource logs okay so policy it means you are applying the set of rules over there and whenever we are having applying the set of rules okay at which particular level so hierarchy again that hierarchy is coming so at the managerial level if you are applying the policy that i am going to create virtual machine only in central india only in uh, south india okay so at that time whenever i am creating the virtual machine i am not it is not allow me to change the reason region over there why because i am applying that azure policy so this is the set of restrictions set of rules that we are going to apply at the hierarch hierarchical level okay so in such a way those policies are getting already applied to the resource level okay so these are the diff, there are the so many different azure policies okay and you can apply it at the number of the resource levels there are the tags as well as i already mentioned tags is a name value pair okay so it's a key value pair like name and value it's whatever the type of the resource that you are going to create you have to just mention the tag so that you can easily categorize it that's it so whatever the resource that you are going to create for the testing purpose for the development purpose for the production purpose just tag it okay so that you can easily Uh, categorized it it's better okay so this is the thing resource lock so that another person uh, like if i'll give the access contributor access to the ashwin contributor access to the ritesh okay shrinivas and if they'll able to create that virtual machine into their uh, into my tenant and whatever the virtual machines that i am going to create now i'll make sure another user is not going to able to delete it so there are the two types of the locks delete okay and read only so these are the two types of the locks over there and obviously with the help of this resource lock the very uh, what we say the very uh, important and as per the uh, resource type of perspective read only is going to be a very very uh, critical okay 